So, just so everybody's aware, I, I, I told the people in the audience here, but for those watching online, uh, if you hear a dubbed voice and my lips do not match up to <laughs> the voice that you hear, that is, I'm going to blame that on Steve. Okay. So, we, we have identified the issue with the audio. We will be working on that. Um, we've pinpointed what it was and why it's happening, so. Just so everybody is aware of that. <clears throat> um, before we get started, Mike, would you open us in prayer real quick? Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for the members to bring us to the resurrection of Jesus Christ which points to our salvation and the death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior and Lord, who gave himself for our sins, that we may be with him forever in heaven. Amen. 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 Thanks, Please sir. bless us, Lord, in this service today. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I'm sorry to cut you off, buddy. <laughs> Didn't mean to. <laughs> all right, so today, as we all know it, is uh, what we all celebrate as the Easter Easter Sunday. Um, Easter is in the Bible. Um, actually, let's go to John John 13 real quick. Word Easter is in the Bible. You didn't know that. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. You can stay there. Uh, Easter is actually the, the timing. Uh, we can thank uh, Constantine for that. And that happened at the Council of Nicaea. Uh, that's what, uh, that was one of his things he dealt with all the way back in 325 AD. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something you can all study out for yourself. Uh, we're not going to do that today. Um, I don't want to delve into that giant mess, but we're going to focus more on uh, what this day rep represents and why we study, or why, not why we study it, but why we celebrate it. Uh, so like I said earlier, this is the one day out of the year that we can all be in Philippians 2 and be of one mind and be of sound, sound mind in love. That's because we're all doing what we're supposed to be doing as Paul uh, was given his his gospel, and we are celebrating the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we are all focused on the same thing. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Everybody should know that by memory. But we're going to go there for reference. We are celebrating today the gospel that can save your soul, according to this scripture here. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. Amen. Amen. This message of the gospel of believing and trusting in the cross of Christ was kept secret. Well, that's not what I was taught, right? I was taught that everyone looking forward to the cross, every, everyone was looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament. Romans 16.25 says, says otherwise. Romans 16.25, please go there. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, this is Paul speaking, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. 
Why was it kept secret? First Corinthians two. Should be about a page over. First Corinthians two. Verse one. And I, brother, and when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that came to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. You ask why? Why was it kept secret? Because my Bible tells me so, for one, in this scripture reference. And I know nobody else knew it, because had they known, they never would have put him on the cross. Jump over one, one page. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 17. Again, this is Paul talking. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of the world, words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Jump down to verse 23. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called, both the Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because the, foolish of God, sorry, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Somehow I put that there for a reason. I think that was supposed to go before everything. Now, this was very perplexing at the time. Because the disciples were not looking for the cross. They were with Jesus for three years. They were not looking for the cross. What were they looking for? The kingdom. kingdom. The kingdom of what? God. The kingdom of heaven. Of earth. earth. On earth. earth. Thank you. They were looking for the kingdom of God on earth. What were they going to be doing there? Ruling on the twelve thrones. Ruling on the twelve thrones. Thank you. <clears throat> they were looking for the earthly kingdom. Why did they think that? Because Jesus told them. Let's look at Luke 22. I know they were looking for it because in Luke 22, Jesus told them about it. Luke 22, verse 28. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. I know they were looking for it because Jesus told them that. And again, let's look at Acts 1. Because in Acts 1, this is after Jesus was crucified, but we can also get reference for that. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, Good job. of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, and to the day in which he was taken up, 
After that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Where? Who is going to be on earth? Yeah. To whom also he showed himself, oh, sorry, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Why? Because the kingdom of God was coming down. But wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many more, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? What were they looking for? They were looking for the earthly kingdom to judge the twelve tribes of Israel. It was a valid question. They had just watched him get crucified. They, he had just come, he was resurrected. All of a sudden he's with, with them, eating, talking, having a good time. And they're saying, is it time? Are we going to go into our kingdom? This is the curious part of this particular scripture. Then he saith unto them, Jesus is talking back to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. What a weird sentence coming from Jesus Christ. Why, why, why do I say that? What did the Jews go by? Times and seasons. <coughs> That is what they study, times and seasons and Passover feasts and rules and regulations and all these things that they had to follow. And then Jesus says, it's not for you to know the times and the seasons. What? What in the world? This is where I'm going to switch gears. And we're going to go back in, back in time here. Do me a favor, turn to uh, Luke 20, 22. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to put yourself back in time. And try to imagine you are with Jesus the night right before he was, or the night he was taken. The night that Peter sliced off the dude's ear. Luke 22, 39. And he came out and went, and had, as he was wont, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at that place, he said unto them, Pray, that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. <laughs> Melissa was just talking about how being human, there is maybe some nervousness, some anxiety in our lives. Clarence, you shared, you shared a little bit about that today. Jesus was human. God in the flesh. He had the emotions we have. He had the, the he had these things. He created us. 
42 says, Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. In verse 43 it says, And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Do you see how he felt about how he was going to be, what he was going to be going through? Yep. He was in agony. An angel appeared on him to strengthen him, to encourage him. The creator of heaven and earth, the creator of the universe, was in agony because he knew what was coming. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. You think he was nervous? You think he was anxious about what was coming? And of course his disciples, as in normal fashion and also being human beings, and when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, a stone's throw away, remember. What were they doing? Sleeping. And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray. He was asking for their prayers. Lest ye enter into temptation. And while he yet spake, Behold a multitude, and he that was, was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. Why? That was the sign, this is your God, to take with you. And Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? But they were that but they which were about but they which were about him saw what would follow. And they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. As those men took Jesus away. What are some emotions that you think might have been going on amongst those disciples? Fear. Fear. Confusion. Confusion. What else? Anxiety. Anxiety. Anger. Mm -hmm. Sadness. Sadness. Lack of understanding. Did not understand what was going on. <clears throat> What were they looking for? A kingdom on earth. Jesus was their king. <clears throat> they were looking for this kingdom to come down to earth. They were going to rule and reign with Jesus Christ. And they got guys with swords coming to take him? What is going on? Now let's jump to uh, verse 1. Chapter 22, or chapter 23. <clears throat> and the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation, and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ a king? And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him and said, Thou sayest it. Oh, how snarky he is. Thou sayest it. <clears throat> then said Pilate to the chief priest and to the people, I find no fault in this man. 
And they were more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. And as soon as they knew that he, that he belonged in the Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod. Who himself also was at Jerusalem at the time. How convenient. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad. <clears throat> For he was desirous to see, of him, of, see him of a long season, because he had heard many things of him. And he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. That was, that was what Herod was excited to see. The kingdom on earth. Show me the goods. I want to see a miracle. You think that was selfish? Show me something cool, man. I've heard all these cool things you can do. You feed 5,000 people with a little bit of bread and a couple fish. Show me something cool. That's all he wanted to see. It was selfish. Wow. Then he questioned with him in many words, but he answered him nothing. The God of the universe, the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of all things on this earth, the creator of the universe, spoken into existence, being interrogated by Herod, by Pilate, then this happens to him. In verse 10, And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. And Herod, with his men of war, set him at naught, and mocked him, and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe, and sent him back to Pilate. And the same day, Pilate and Herod were made friends together. Why? For they themselves were at enmity between themselves, but they had a common enemy now. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers of the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverted the people. And behold, I, having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. I can't find anything wrong you say that he has done. Everything you're telling me he has done, I find no accusation that is true that you have brought to me. No, nor yet Herod. For I said to you him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. That's all I can do for you today. I'll beat him. You can have him back. But he's not worthy of death. Verse 17, For of a necessity he must release one unto them at the feast. In verse 18, And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas. <laughs> Who is Barabbas? <laughs> Who for a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake, unto, spake again unto them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! And he said unto them the third time, Why? What evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him, and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices requiring 
that he might be crucified. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto them that for sedition, and the murderer was cast into the prison whom they had desired, but he delivered Jesus at their will. Do me a favor. Go to Matthew 4, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. chapter 4 verse 1 then when Jesus was led up into the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil and when he had fasted fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was afterward hungered and when the tempter came to him he said if thou be the son of God command that these stones be made of bread but he answered and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil, taking him up on the seating high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen. Amen. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. You saw in Luke 22 that an angel came and ministered to Jesus while he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was physically weak in both at both times. He was hungry. He was in agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yes. The reason I bring this up, because I ask you to imagine yourself as a disciple in that moment when Jesus was being taken away, the confusion and the anger. And I want you to put yourself in that crowd, hearing those things that was being said. To Pilate. Crucify him! Do you think the devil was in that place? Do you think all the demons that he cast out were in that place? Being in some of those people? Screaming and yelling, getting volatile. Now it doesn't say that here, but an angry mob. An angry mob that's filled with hatred and vitriol for the Lord of hosts, the God who created heaven and earth. I think it shows the history of our Bible and when the devil comes to Jesus when he was in a weakened physical state. <coughs> the devil's character. You did a study about this not too long ago about how he reacts and what his goal is. 
in Isaiah 14, 12. about Lucifer. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also <clears throat> upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. The devil's all about himself. The devil's goal is to be the Most High. His goal that day was to show himself mighty and strong. This was his opportunity. And in his mind, he was winning. You think the devil was present that day? Yes. Because of what Christ did on the cross, we can lean on these scriptures. Colossians 2. Let's turn to Colossians 2. Colossians 2, verse 1. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you. This is Paul speaking. And for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not yet seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love and to all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with the enticing words, for though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness, steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye, have, ye are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, 
in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, where, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the <coughs> operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. This is one of my favorite verses. That hatred, the devil being in that place, winning, this is my favorite verse. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them op openly, trium triumphing over them in it. Amen. Hallelujah. Just when the devil thought he had won, killing Christ on the cross, watching him suffer. Yes. This is when I will ascend to the he thought he killed God. And he busted him in his hatred, in his vitriol. Absolutely spoiled him in that time. Yes! His pride and hubris. Amen. Move over to Colossians 3. Colossians 3, 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear... Then shall ye appear with him in glory. glory. Wow. One more scripture reference and we'll be finished. I never really understood this passage, passage until I started going through um, the, account, the account of Christ. I didn't, I didn't get it for the longest time. But Romans 12, to Romans 12, real quick. Close up. <clears throat> Romans 12, 9. <clears throat> Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor of preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, <clears throat> patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Man, you want to talk about something that's easier to say. Amen. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. And this is why I like going through all these scripture verses. This is the part I didn't understand. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place, oh, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. He's better at it anyways. 
he's a much better planet, planner of that anyways. Hallelujah there. If you don't believe me, read exactly through all those scripture verses we just read. You'll understand why vengeance is his. He owns it. He's the creator of everything. He's the finisher of everything. He owns vengeance. Amen. But he is also our life in Christ. Amen. Through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this time. We are grateful that we are able to be here with you. We rejoice in your death, the burial, and the resurrection of life. You went and held captivity captive, you freed them, and in the devil's arrogance and pride, you put him down and made him a show and spoiled his plans. We thank you for that, Father. We thank you for the victory we have in that, and we thank you for that the victory is yours and not ours. And we thank you for the gift that you have given in Christ and through Christ. Amen. Amen.